Right, hi everybody, I am back again. Uh, as promised, this is uh, part two of topic 3.3, Threats to Biodiversity. And in this one I'll cover um, what the syllabus asks us to look at, which is some case studies. Um, I'll very quickly just show you the, uh, the syllabus statement that I want to cover. There's only one statement, so this means this will be a very short video for once, hopefully. Uh, the IB asks us to discuss case histories of three different species, one that has become extinct because of human activity, another that is currently critically endangered, and a third species whose conservation status has been uh, improved due to human intervention. The three species I've shown to illustrate this, you can see above my head. In terms of extinction, I want to look at the Tasmanian tiger, critically endangered the um, black rhino, in Eastern Africa, and then back from the brink because of conservation efforts, um, we'll finish with a ray of hope, like I said, uh, the bald eagle in the United States that is um, doing very well at the moment actually, due to conservation efforts. Okay, uh, moving swiftly on, uh, this is a picture of the last known Tasmanian tiger, certainly the last one in captivity. Uh, he was called Benjamin and he died in Hobart Zoo in 1936. Not that long ago, uh, within living memory, I would say. Um, it was only a couple of years before my own dad was born, actually. Um, there's a famous video of him that was actually taken just before he died. Uh, I found it on YouTube. I, in fact, I actually found the colorized version, which I, hopefully I can play for you now. I hope it's not going to be too distracting, because I want to speak while you can see him kind of walking around his cage. Uh, so this is Benjamin. Over the other side. There we go. Uh, Benjamin. Uh, first of all, I should say, not a tiger in any sense of the word. It's a marsupial mammal. Uh, you'll see him walking around his cage here. Beautiful animal. Okay, so we shouldn't refer to it as a tiger at all. It's actually called a, a thylacine, or we should refer to its Latin name of thylacinus. Um, originally had a huge habitat across Australasia, New Guinea. Tasmania. Uh, by close to the turn of the 19th, sorry, the 20th century, um, it had been pushed uh, so far away from its natural habitat by humans, it was only around in Tasmania, and that's why it got the name of Tasmanian tiger. Um, as I said, this is Benjamin. He died in 1936. Sadly, there was no efforts to try to um, conserve this species. Unbelievably, he died because his zookeepers one night forgot to put him back into his um, his kind of pen and he died of exposure, died of exposure to the cold. Um, his habitat was basically Australian grassland, it was a nocturnal top predator, um, but it did come in, into competition with other um, predators, specifically the Tasmanian devil and dingoes. Uh, one reason why it survived longer in Tasmania is because there's no dingoes in Tasmania. And the reason it went, it was driven towards extinction was because of hunting specifically by farmers to protect their own livestock. Um, so as I said, Benjamin was the last surviving individual. Um, it seems at that stage there was no other uh, females around for him to mate with, so therefore he was basically, it was basically a walking dead species before he died. The species was doomed to extinction before he actually um, died in 1936. Um, I've read there's been a lot of unconfirmed sightings over the last 50 years of Tasmanian tigers in the wild, um, but it does seem as if it's largely just oh, all just people looking for publicity and trying to get onto the television. Um, so that's an extinct species, um, the Tasmanian tiger. For a species that's currently critically endangered and therefore on the IUCN red list, I've chosen the black rhino. Um, there were four subspecies until basically a couple of years ago. I forget when the, I should have checked before I uh, recorded this, I forget when the western black rhino actually did become extinct when the last individual died. Um, there were originally four subspecies, now there are only three subspecies of black rhino. They largely uh, live in Kenya and Namibia in East Africa and they were uh, on the verge of extinction, critically endangered because of hunting again human activity. One of the big reasons for poaching 
especially is the demand for rhino horn in um, East Asia, uh, Vietnam and China specifically for um, traditional medicine, unfortunately. Um, what else can we say? Um, some good news actually. At the start of uh, this century, the 21st century, there were only 50 individuals left uh, across four subspecies. There are now 4,500 individuals, more or less, across three subspecies. I think that's a success story, um, probably. Uh, and the conservation efforts have been basically by you know, guarding the individuals that are remaining, deterring poachers. There are armed police guarding these uh, individual animals, uh, good security. And there's been a crackdown on the sale of rhino horn for traditional uh, medicine in the Far East as well. Uh, one other reason, uh, one reason why, why these conservation efforts have been so well funded, it's obviously a, a flagship species that's very um, attractive to tourism, to ecotourism especially, and ecotourism is really starting to take off now in East Africa. Okay, and then finally, uh, I call this back from the brink. This is the bald eagle. You'll know that we've mentioned it quite a bit before previously in the course, especially when we talked about biomagnification uh, of toxins in the food chain, specifically DDT, the insecticide. Um, it's uh, indigenous across the United States and Canada, um, hunts in lakes, coastal areas and marshes. Uh, was driven towards extinction again due to hunting and obviously because of um, DDT biomagnifying up the food chain and it was the subject of Rachel Carson's book published in 1962, Silent Spring. Um, again, it's a flagship species, it's the symbol of the United States, a um, lot of interest in its, um, in its conservation, especially in the USA. By the start of the 1960s, there were less than 500 nesting uh, pairs of bald eagles, and it now seems like there are around or maybe more than 10,000 nesting pairs. So it's a huge success story. Um, it was protected, first of all, by um, the banning of DDT in the United States and other places, um, and the restriction of hunting. Um, hunting has been illegal since 1940 of these birds, um, but unfortunately, as you know, trophy hunters are can be very persistent people, and illegal hunting still exists to this day. Hunting and the stealing of eggs from from nests, but they're a well protected species now, and they're well on the the way to recovery. No longer critically endangered, no longer on the IUCN red list. Okay, I think that covers everything that the IB asked us to do. Just a very simple case study, so we can discuss it further in the class, obviously. Okay, take care, and I will speak to you this week.